Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's Chemistry Webcast. In this webcast, we're talking about conversions between particles and moles, and then between moles and mass and particles as well. It's all about dimensional analysis. Here's what I want to discuss in this webcast. First, I want to talk about how we can calculate the particles of a substance if we're given moles. And then in the opposite direction, if we're given particles, how do we calculate moles of the substance? And finally, I'd like to wrap up by talking about two-step problems where we have mass to moles to particles, or particles to moles to mass. It's all about dimensional analysis. Keep your calculator ready. We're going to use it. I very much recommend when we get to the practice problems that you try to do it on your own, and then check your answer and work against mine. Now, in order to do these problems successfully, you need to know what we mean by a mole. It's the chemist's favorite unit for chemical quantities. A mole is defined as a sample that contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Now, when I talk about particles here, I mean representative particles, atoms of an element, molecules of a covalent compound, formula units of an ionic compound. That's usually what we're talking about. It's Avogadro's number. It's a really important number. In fact, you should memorize this number. You're going to use it all the time. The sample shown here in this photograph each contain one mole of that substance. Notice they have different volumes, but they all have the same number of particles, atoms, molecules, formula units. When students are learning to solve these problems, they often find a visual approach useful. I call this the mole road. So let's say we need to calculate moles from particles. We're given atoms or molecules, and we want to know how many moles of that substance we have. So I'm starting with particles. I want to get to moles. What am I going to do? Well, what I'm going to do is divide by Avogadro's number. Or I could say it as I'm going to multiply by 1 over Avogadro's number. It's all the same thing in the end, right? Notice what that does to the units. The units of particles cancels, leaves me with moles. That's what I want to do. So we're going to go and do some practice problems, grab your calculator, and work along with me. Here's practice problem number one. How many moles are present in a sample containing 8.54 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of neon? So I'm given atoms of neon, I want to find moles. I'm also looking at the number of atoms that are given in the problem, and that's bigger than Avogadro's number. That's going to be useful, because that tells me I have more than a mole of atoms of neon. So let's set it up as a factor label problem. X what I'm solving for equals what I'm given. X moles of neon equals 8.54 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of neon. I'm going to multiply by 1 over Avogadro's number. I set it up this way so that the unit atoms of neon cancels. It leaves me with the unit moles of neon. I've got an initial value that was bigger than Avogadro's number, so I'm expecting an answer that's bigger than 1. And I get 1.42 moles of neon, which is consistent with what I'm expecting. And I've reported it with the correct number of sig figs and appropriate units. I had three sig figs and 8.54 times 10 to the 23rd. I report my answer with three sig figs, and my unit should be moles of neon. We were just doing problems where we were solving for moles given particles. What if we have to go in the other direction? What if we have moles and we want to find the number of particles? For those problems, we're going to multiply by Avogadro's number. Again, look at how the units cancel out. Moles will cancel. It'll leave me with particles. It's time for another practice problem. Get out your calculator. How many molecules are present in a 0.39 mole sample of oxygen gas? I'm solving for molecules. I'm given moles. So I'm going to write it as x molecules equals 0.39 moles of O2. We're going to multiply by Avogadro's number, molecules per mole. I set it up this way so that the unit moles of oxygen cancels out. It leaves me with molecules, which is what I'm solving for. I'm also noticing that I have an initial value of moles that's less than 1. So I'm expecting an answer that's less than Avogadro's number. I set this up, I get 2.4 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen molecules. That's reasonable. It's definitely less than Avogadro's number. I have two sig figs in 0.39 moles of oxygen, so I report my answer with two sig figs, and we're all set. I think we're ready to start talking about multi-step problems. We were just doing particles to moles, moles to particles, but we've also done problems where we had grams to moles and moles to grams. We can link these together to do two-step problems. I can go from grams to moles and from moles to particles. I can go from particles to moles and moles to grams. I just need to pay attention to my units, and the factor label really helps me set it up. Sometimes students like to memorize this. I really like students to think through the factor label process. But what's really important is, in the end, you can solve these problems successfully. Get out your calculator and your periodic table. We're going to do some practice problems. You knew we were going to do practice problems. What is the mass in grams of a sample of magnesium containing 5.60 times 10 to the 23rd atoms? So I'm given atoms. I'm solving for mass. I can't do it in one step. I have to do atoms to moles and then moles to mass. 
get out your calculator and your periodic table, try and do the problem on your own, and then listen to my solution. Let's set up the problem. X grams of magnesium equals 5.60 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of magnesium. Now I need to use Avogadro's number to get to moles. I want to set it up so that the unit atoms of magnesium cancels out. So that means I need to put Avogadro's number in the denominator of this conversion factor, and that will lead me to moles of magnesium. And then I need a second conversion factor. I need to go from moles to grams with the molar mass of magnesium, which I can find right from the periodic table, 24.3 grams per mole. I want the unit of moles to be in the denominator of this second conversion factor so that my units will cancel out and leave me with what I want. The unit atoms of magnesium cancels out. The unit moles of magnesium cancels out. I'm left with grams of magnesium. That's what I wanted. I've got everything set up correctly. I'm also recognizing that the number of atoms that I was initially given is smaller than Avogadro's number. That means I have less than a mole of magnesium, and so I'm expecting my mass that I calculate to be less than 24.3. I get an answer of 22.6 grams of magnesium, and that seems reasonable. I've also got three sig figs and appropriate units. One more practice problem. Again, try it on your own, and then listen to my solution and check your work against mine. How many nitrogen molecules are present in a 59 gram sample of nitrogen? Remember, we always do x what I'm solving for equals what I'm given. x N2 molecules equals 59 grams of N2. You have to remember that nitrogen is a diatomic molecule, and this is actually a common mistake for students. They forget that. So I have to multiply by 1 over the molar mass of nitrogen, remembering that nitrogen is a diatomic. So my molar mass is 28.01 grams per mole. And then I'm going to multiply by Avogadro's number to get from moles of nitrogen to molecules of nitrogen. I have definitely more than 28 grams of nitrogen, so I have more than a mole of nitrogen. I'm expecting an answer that's bigger than Avogadro's number. The units of grams of nitrogen cancel, the unit moles of nitrogen cancel, leaves me with molecules of nitrogen, so I've set this up correctly. It's always good to double check yourself that way. And I get a final answer of 1.3 times 10 to the 24th molecules of nitrogen. That seems reasonable, and it makes sense. And I have the right number of sig figs and appropriate units. If you found this helpful, let me know. Subscribe to my channel, like the video, and leave a comment. Practice chemistry every day. That's how you get better.